and welcome to the SmackDown preview. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by another one, Dolly Boy, Michael Havler from What Culture, to look ahead to tonight's episode of Friday Night SmackDown. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Ah! Where we do daily wrestling podcasts where we not only review SmackDown, but also on our row. Uh, the show formerly known as NXT 2.0. Oh, AW Dynamite, AW Collision, pay-per-views, premium live events. We have interviews, roundtable discussions, and a round of the week complete. Quiz, of course, on wrestle culture. As I said, though, joined by Michael Hamlet to look ahead to tonight's episode of Friday Night SmackDown. the admin out of the way yes i should say we are filming this for the youtube channel and uh <laughs> not like we don't do that every week yes anyway. <laughs> um also we are recording this on thursday so when wwe inevitably books the rock versus cody rhodes for tonight's show yeah that's why we haven't talked about it um because it is a long weekend mm-hmm. here in the uk a four-day weekend you've got great friday in the words of tony khan and then you've got easter monday and and then we're on the road to wrestlemania so unfortunately we will not be around to review this mm-hmm. show but i can fairly certain predict it's going to be goaded um <laughs> but before we dive into any of this It's been a very weird, topsy-turvy week. And Mm. like I say, we're on the road to WrestleMania and what have you. You've just, perfect timing, just got over an illness. Hence why we had the weird SmackDown review recording uh, earlier on in the week. But it also means I haven't had a chance to talk to you about the thing everyone's talking about, of course. Um, And two people who probably won't be on this show, at least not at time of recording. The Rock and Cody Rhodes. Thoughts? Oh, God, you better believe it's going to be a long weekend because I can't believe I have to wait all the way to Monday to see more WWE Raw. Like, my thoughts were, initially, I don't want to go on off a rant here, but my thoughts were, oh, another, another great Raw in a <laughs> series of them. I mean, where have you been the last 18 months? I'm a little bit annoyed, actually. Okay. Because I loved what I saw. Who didn't? Yeah. Uh, CM Punk in... I was going to say a rare form, but if anything, they're all too common form. Yeah. And that first feeling of, is everything all right? And then even if it's not, cool. Like, let's see where that goes. But him and Drew and Seth, really, really hot. By all reports, things are fine. You know, him and Seth are getting together backstage, planning this sort of thing out as well, as long well, as it's true, of course. It's almost like if you're going to have talents go out there and do that, you just do some effective man management and make sure that people ultimately, even after the fact, are just clear on things. And if there's any, like little hostilities you do your best as an adult to uh, get in that room mm. and some of those things otherwise they get out of hand it's one way well, of doing it I suppose oh, well. anyway see I thought that was tremendous um, look at you now look at you now look at this look at this I'm look at l- you now I'm gonna learn you about hard times oh god greatest thing in my life uh all of that, like Cody in the rain. No, I'm not sure if you spotted in the background as well. There's one uh, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, and John Cena. Genuinely good, that. They must have seen the reporting because it was everywhere. Well, they listened to the podcast is what they did. Indeed. Um, it was out there from, like, what, Friday? Mm-hmm. Those names specifically. Uh, people have fantasy booked Steve Austin and John Cena as potential, like, bloodline... Uh, I don't know, like... Infinity War is what it's being yeah, compared to, Cody isn't it? Yeah, Cody like, sort of bloodline army. Um, but specifically, we're linked to The Rock, obviously. Huge WrestleMania links to The Rock, of course. So that was just either a really nice um, Easter egg. It was done on purpose. Mm-hmm. All the other trucks got the WrestleMania brand all over them. But e- even if it's, it's just... It's also a, really well lit, that truck. Yeah. Like, even if it's just a red herring, it's a really fun one. Almost like... I love the idea of, like, they were showing you, oh, you know, you want to be a big star... Like, what's proof of being a massive star in 2024? It's having your face on a truck. Mm. So Rock was like, Cody, I'm going to take your face and slam <laughs> it into a truck. You want your face on a truck? I'll bust you up on one. It was perfect. Like, it was just, it was absolutely perfect. However, okay, I've not come to complain about the quality of Monday Night Raw. I've come to complain about the insistence that a number of people, when I'm scrolling through social media... And just looking to share in the joy, mm-hmm. share in the fun we all had, who just simply still refuse to just go, oh, do you know why that was good? It's because WWE is good. Uh, like, okay. I don't, like, people should be walking around looking like it's gone half an hour with Will Osprey, the amount they're bending over backwards 
to find reasons to not say, well, WWE's pretty good. Like, I'm just sick of it. Mm. I'm sick of being like, well, it's good for this. Or, no, that was very unfed-like is what made it good. F*** <laughs> off. Like, it's, that's not true. Okay. What we saw on Monday's Raw, right, was the result of, well, an incredibly crowd-pleasing pivot at the end of January mm -hmm. when WrestleMania nearly went up in smoke and nobody liked it. And they're like, well, we'll do this instead then. Right? And The Rock just got all the way locked in and it was class. And yes, of course, you're not going to get swearing on Raw every single week. You're going to get blood almost never. Um, you're not going to get too many segments like CM Punk like spitting his dummy out a hundred times and just trying to cut people off like every single point. Of course, you're not going to get those You want I think Punk? Nope. <laughs> Incredible. Right? Number one, uh, it's a little thing called discipline. Certain other bookers could maybe exert some every now and then. They're at the best when they do exert some. Right? You do that every week. I love else. it. This is you This is you as punk. You've had some days off and you've come back in. I want to address a few things. I do. He's starving. I'm absolutely starving. <laughs> Philadelphia's going to be a victim of that. <laughs> and so am I. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just... I'm, I'm just getting a bit bored, really. Like, of people not just outright saying... Like, if this was... This is a big angle and WWE don't shoot a lot of angles of this size mm. and scale. But... What time of year do they typically shoot these size angles? WrestleMania season. Yes. Even when the product's terrible, right? Pick a terrible WrestleMania year and you'll find a Raw or an angle or a promo or a big night for it. Mm -hmm. um, like Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, and Charlotte Flair in the police cars. Mm -hmm. Becky's road to WrestleMania was terrible. Was it not awful yeah. for the most part? Crutches, apologies, McMahon's, Charlotte Flair. And yet that one angle on that one night was fantastic. The f***ing New Day... Oh, I saw running the, the gauntlet the and Fraser the, sent that to us and the Usos, yeah, stepping aside so that Kofi could get that little bit closer to WrestleMania. Like that was 2019. Yeah, like WWE could do nothing right then, nothing. And that thing happened on that SmackDown, right? So even when the product was terrible, this was the time of year for incredible angles, uh, like hot stars at the peak matches, whatever. Like. <laughs> You got that. You you got that at this time of year, even yeah. when WWE was bad, right? So let's take that era, two out of ten most weeks. February, April, February, March, April comes around, they can maybe get up to a seven. Raw was a ten for some people, mm -hmm. a nine for a lot yeah. of people. Well, that's because most WWE exists at a seven now. So you've taken Hang some... On, I think I've got a button for this. And I mean... <laughs> Folks, where's the lie? So something that is consistently good, and everybody watching this will know this because you've tuned in to watch a SmackDown preview. You're just excited for another great Friday night. Like, when it's consistently good, you have the opportunity to create great. Mm. And there was absolutely loads of great on Raw. So whilst it was amazing, in the days that have passed since, where, as you say, like CM Punk, I have had time to stew and not celebrate, <laughs> not celebrate all the good stuff like I should do. I've instead just stewed the juices of the people on X or people, and this is a big one, by the way, because I want to single out Michael Sidgwick as somebody that watches this every week. Yes. And has informed <laughs> criticisms on this. Does not like it. No. But we'll talk at length about why that is, right? A lot of what I read comes from people that do not watch, right? And then something good happens, and thus they are drawn back in, and then don't see all of it for three hours. Yes. Don't see all of it next week or whatever, right? And then just go... Oh, well, this is rubbish. Like, it's this one good thing. I'll tell you what I'm reading a lot of. Oh, that was a great build for Cody and Rock, but that's not happening. Yes, it f***ing is. It's happening in a tag match. Yeah. It's happening in a tag match, and then there's a singles match to follow. Yes. Is that not just fantastic promotion? Am I losing my frigging mind or something? a great tweet about Because this. people are so desperate to be like, oh, Fed will never be good. It will never be good. You know what? It won't be good again in about a year's time. That's my prediction. Mm. I've lived enough Disagree, cycles. Disagree, but okay. I've lived enough cycles this. No, it's not a prediction. It's a spoiler. But like, there will come a time where it's not good. And we'll talk about that then yes. when we get there too. Hopefully, if we're still allowed to be on YouTube. But like, <laughs> fundamentally, I think a lot of it is like, so there's the rock thing. There's a, yeah, I really want to watch uh, CM Punk versus Drew, and I really want to watch CM Punk versus Seth, but I'm not sure we're interested in Seth versus Drew. A, you're a liar. B, you're going to get Punk Drew. You're going to get Punk Seth. Fingers crossed. But like, you're going to yes. get those matches because they're booking them as well. Yeah. But like, you got all of this. WrestleMania's unchanged in how goaded it is, and then after the fact, there's still going to be stuff to do. This is the 52 week a year show. Like, this is the best version of them telling you it's the end of the world on Sunday. But by the way, join us on Monday for the restart of the world. Like, I just. 
just say it's good. Mm. Ju- I dare you. I, just say it's good. I will say, to give a bit of balance, I'm not happy with WrestleMania 40, okay? I've put it out there, I've said it, because when am I meant to go to the bar and when am I meant to go to the toilet? I am invested in every single match. There was a little bit of me that would have held my hands up and said, I'm going to be there for the LA night, you're a, and AJ Styles entrances, and I'll go, good luck with that, lads. Uh, and now LA Knight's been arrested, and I've no idea what he's going to do on tonight's SmackDown to further that insanity between the two of them. And I'm invested in that. There's not a single match right now. That bloody final testament onto the card, in my opinion, may change. But there's not a single match right now on that WrestleMania card that I think, that's a toilet break. Well, well, Bob, you come at me with a problem. But this is a Fed podcast. We're solutions orientated over here. Go on. Right? I've got your back. I've got you sorted. What is something else that people spend all the goddamn time complaining about when a PLE is on the air? That's right. Peacock adverts. You get yourself to the oh, toilet. Oh, yes. Well, a nice video clip. It's about four years old. Bobby Lashley plays on the screen. And you know that's your cue to go to the bar, to go to the toilet, to get back in time for those sweet, sweet entrances. You know what? Uh, one final thing. We will preview SmackDown in a second. One final thing that people have been performatively angry about this week. Uh-huh. Because obviously the the Peacock or the network or whatever, the schedule's updated. And you can go and look. It's so many days, weeks, hours, minutes, whatever, until WrestleMania. And the slot for WrestleMania is six hours. And people are like, oh, no, WrestleMania sucks now. It's six hours. You all know it's going to be a two-hour pre-show and a four-hour show both nights. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how it works. Uh-huh. Stop getting performatively. Oh, what's going on here, guys? Oh, the same thing that's happened in the last two sodding years. Anyway, let's talk about SmackDown. Because I'm really excited about tonight's show. I love Raw. I love Raw, but like, uh, join us next Tuesday, the Tuesday after, and Tuesday after, Tuesday after, and it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Catch up. Catch the <laughs> up. Like, honestly, man, especially this time of year. Yeah. Like, watch it. This is like a three month advent calendar for Christmas Day in two weeks. Jesus Christ. Well, it only gets better on tonight's SmackDown. We might not have The Rock and Cody Rhodes or Roman Reigns. They're all probably going to be on Raw uh, yeah. next week. Uh, but we still got mega stars because Jade Cargill is back. She's set to make her first appearance as a SmackDown superstar. Uh, is she going to make it onto the Mania card for you? Yes, I think it's. Um, I don't know what's happened with the Jade Cargill debut. I don't know if what we saw was those teasers, and it does feel like there was a delay. Mm-hmm. And then we got the Royal Rumble appearance, which was fantastic. That's the trying to wrestle. Well, like, so you say that with a little. Uh, little glint in your eye and I get what you're doing there but there, I think there was a conversation around Jade Cargill I like Jade Cargill's matches in AEW for the most part mm-hmm. they were one dimensional but that was a cool dimension and I sometimes like it when wrestlers just stay in the dimension they're great at mm. um, WWE however want you to find the hard camera they want you to do X, Y yeah. and Z and that was the story trickling out wasn't it it's like they weren't necessarily Triple H said something in a press conference along the lines of yeah well, she, well, she's coming along ruffled her hair mm. so it's Jade Cargill mate like, I don't care if she doesn't know... Class in a rumble. I don't care if she doesn't know, like, a wrist lock from a wrist watch. Have you seen the watch? Mm. Like, I'll just like I'll just watch Jade Cargill being Jade Cargill as a megastar. And I think if you don't include her on WrestleMania, having brought her out here... Yes. That diminishes that somewhat. Jade Cargill should say, I'm going to be on WrestleMania. Look at me. And that should be it. And that should be when the SmackDown general manager... Toasting the signing of Jade Cargill. name Car- is, sorry. Uh, I'll come back to my, stay tuned. Um, should toast the signing and say, well, obviously I knew what I got. And, you know, it was part of your contract as you knew. And you're going to be, you've got your choice of a WrestleMania match or something like that. It was signed in that Jade Cargill would be at WrestleMania and she could call her shot. That was part of the deal. Because if you remember a couple of weeks ago, um, she looked set to sign. And then the boot off in the box. Yes. Like, she was like, I thought this was a professional outfit, I'm away. What has the SmackDown GM done to get her back on side? I say it's give her a WrestleMania open contract because a week after that, we saw her little face off with Damage Katara. Yes. So I think she's put in the contract. I want a WrestleMania, like, pick my opponent. And she's surveyed what goes on with Damage Katara and Bianca Belair and Naomi. And she levels up the numbers for the baby faces, and we get a six woman tag. The tag titles weren't on the line last year, if no, you recall, because they were wrapped up in that six woman with Lita and Trish. Lita, Trish, yeah. and Becky against Damage Control. So we do in sort of another version of that. Okay. Yeah, I can see that one happening. Yeah, I, I flip flopped all over the place with this. It was like uh, Jade and Naomi as a tag team versus the tag champs. 
And then it was like, oh, okay, they look like they're pivoting and doing Naomi and Bianca. The three-on-three, I like the sound of. But then again, how does Tiffany Stratton factor into all this This is a big one for you, isn't it? Like, whenever the numbers shake out, you're always like, where's Tiffany Stratton? I'd given up on it until last week's SmackDown, where... Was it Naomi who got misted? Yeah. And she's, she's trying like, to wash it out of her eyes. Looks good on you. Tiff just happens to walk past and go, it's good luck. Yeah. I don't know whether they're, they're prepping Tiff just in case. Asuka seems fine, which is great news. Mm. But if they need a third for the damage control team, um, Tiffany could step in there. There's a little bit, a bit of me that thinks, oh, for a while I thought it was going to be Naomi and Bianca versus the tag champs. you got Dakota Kai ringside for one team and... Jay Cargill either is either announced or decides on the night. Now nah, this isn't right, and I'm going to be the, the yeah, uh, you know, level like an team. enforcer. Something, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then there's also another part of my brain that goes, just do the Nia Jax match. Like Nia's earned a match at WrestleMania this year without question. Yeah, yeah. Like, and they've got history from the Rumble, of course. You mentioned Nia Jax, and I was thinking of Tiffany Stratton before, but Nia Jax is another one. Like WrestleMania under Triple H, the 39 and 40 feels, well, in as much as there's loads of repeating people across night one and night two this year, feels as much as a meritocracy WrestleMania as we've had mm. in like the last like 40 and 39, like in the last like 20 years, realistically. The people that are on the card, as you're watching week to week, feel like they've like earned that spot. Yeah. And they've been really key to the last 12 months. They feel like they're in hot stories and the programs have been, like most of them have been on the board probably from Christmas at the latest. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been able to map out, in some cases, even longer, one we're going to talk about in a little bit. And somebody always gets to be the odd one out, and I was thinking, oh, is Tiffany Stratton that this year because of the timing of a call-up? She, all the stuff she was doing was on NXT. But is it Nia Jax in reality? Because Nia like, had a purpose beyond Elimination Chamber, and that in itself was quite a noble purpose. Look like a monster heel against a hometown, a home country hero. But her purpose beyond that was Becky Lynch. And that purpose is feeling more served as well. Mm. So it almost feels unfair that you set yourself up to do all these important jobs, like getting everybody ready. Wrestling is like this sometimes, but you set yourself up to do all these important jobs, getting people ready, get them all ready. They have their big night. And you, I can't even say this, Nia Jax, the utility player, it's yeah. suddenly the one left without a role. It's. I mean, there is one role I can think of. Go on. I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, at the Las Vegas WrestleMania thing, they had a big family tree. People are always fantasy booking her, getting involved in Bloodline stuff. And Brandy Rhodes <laughs> jumping over that rail. I didn't even think of Brandy Rhodes, but yes, there was a third face on the truck, Trish Stratus. Oh. So there we go. We've got a new baby face. For Brandy, <laughs> Rose. Brandy Rhodes is a much better pick. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Tick, tick, motherfucking tick. Brandy Rhodes slapping Nia Jax all over. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> the J Cargo stuff sort of factors into another potential element of this tonight's show because you've also got uh, Bianca Belair versus Dakota Kai. First of all, oh my God. love that matchup. Yeah. Great to see Dakota back in the ring, of course. And I love the, the sort of slow drawing in of Bianca of like, I like Naomi. I hate Bailey, and I am not doing anything to help her. All right, Bailey's been taken out, and now Naomi's getting triple teamed. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll step up then. And they kicked her AS, obviously, and people were chanting for Bailey, but Bailey was taken out prior to the match by EO uh, Sky, of course. Yeah. Tonight is her versus Dakota. It feels like this is all coming together at the right time. I think so, and I hope so because and Bailey could make the save for her tonight. And she's like, you know what? She you know you know what Bailey? She could look at her and say. Uh, Hey, Bailey. Hey, 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 hey. You all right. <laughs> new, new button. Hey, 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 look at you now. <laughs> um, yeah, Bianca Belair has, I don't want to say saved this program, it's hyperbolic, but she has been vital to this program mm-hmm. not being on life support. Like, I, I love Bailey so much. It's good to go six weeks ago on it, basically. Yeah, and the way they timed out the turn, um, all you had left was Dakota Kai, it seemed. It's like they did it and then went, oh, no, five more weeks of telly. Yeah. It, like, it was like, oh, the Dakota Kai thing is going to be the twist. Seven days later, <laughs> yeah. she's telling all oh, that's yeah. that then. Like, it's that bit in the, uh, you know, that Office Christmas episode where um, 
like Daryl brings his daughter into the office and he's like, oh, I can't try to make the office Christmassy for you. And then Pam takes Daryl and his daughter downstairs and the warehouse has been turned into like a magical scavenger hunt. And like um, Andy Bernard's like playing like, a, it's like the Nutcracker theme is playing. Duh, 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 and he's like mysteriously going around. And he's like, can you solve these Christmas riddles? And like he asks her like one question. She says, oh, it's this. And he says, and you've done it. Here's your Christmas star. And Pam was like, well, that was a great 12 seconds. <laughs> like, I've just felt with this story when I was just wanting to invest in that, I was like, here's this, right, uh, have this. And then Bianca Belair, that one week when they were just in front of the monitor being like, I'm not helping it. Mm. I, I was like, oh, right, great. Like, here is a main character of WWE in Bianca Belair who looked increasingly like nothing was on the table for WrestleMania, now having this, like, pivotal role mm -hmm. in, the, in the, like, the women's title match, which we know isn't going to go on last on either of the nights. Yeah. So it already stood to be marginalised somewhat, and then you're just infusing it with a huge star who... By showing that side of a bit, like bristling a little bit when Naomi was like, we need to help her. She's a smart baby face who remembers things, yeah. Showing an important side of her personality that like would typically get lost when she was the champion. She was too nice. Like Bianca Belair is the coolest as well. And you were getting that back again here. And I just, I've loved this addition to it. And I would like, I think Bianca Belair wins. Okay. I, I want to finish. They've been a bit cheap with these damage guitar yeah, matches. Yeah, So it could be a DQ. They've, like, Dakota and Bailey was really getting somewhere, and then you just, oh, the DQ's coming here, and I like that. So I don't want that again. But I would like Dakota to almost have this one, uh, the numbers game and all that sort yeah. of thing. And Bailey this time, is there to, I don't know, whether it be like pull Kyrie saying out when she's trying to interfere or just, just fight with the old sky on the floor, and that in itself creates enough of a distraction <laughs> that Bianca gets the win and sort of sees... Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, where Bailey's loyalties lie. Because I did like that about her being attacked last week. Mm. Like, she wasn't there to make the save, but we know why. But in the, very much like a Drew McIntyre way, when he was first turning, Bianca right now has the argument of, well, where was she? Yeah. She was. She was there. You know, she was down. No, but where, that's not enough. She could have got up and helped. This week, I want her to get the sort of irrefutable evidence that Bailey's a good egg again. Yes. And to set up whatever tag we're doing, whatever arrangement it is. Uh, who else is heading to WrestleMania is a question that's going to be answered tonight because we have two of the final tag team qualifiers mm. to add to that six man. Let's see. I've not got the card in front of me, so let's see if we can remember. Judgment Day, DX, <laughs> Awesome Truth. Yeah. Who qualified on Monday? New Day. New Day. There we go. And we got two more teams two to more, qualify yeah. um, tonight. It's... Street Profits versus A Town Dan Ander and New Catch Republic versus Legado del Fantasma. I sent shenanigans in both of these matches because there's potential to have another two matches at Mania spinning off the back of this. I'm talking, of course, of the Street Profits and uh, the Final Testament Mega Glove, mm -hmm. as we've been calling them. And of course, <laughs> Legado del Fantasma but and the LWO. The last three kids, please. You Sorry, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stable's proper name, thank you. Uh, and Legado and the LWO. But let's talk about these matches first and foremost. Um, Street Profits, A Town, Dan Ander. I'd be happy with either of these teams qualifying. I, I mean, regardless, I want Dawkins and Tez on the card. Yeah. But A Town, Dan Ander would be a good team to take ridiculous bumps in that ladder match. They would. Uh, we saw um, Grayson Waller take a ridiculous bump off a ladder once. Jeez. Do an elbow through a table off like one of them 20 foot ladders. It's rough. It that. was really, really high. Um, I mean, the guy who won that match, where's he? What's going on? What is going on with him? You tell me. I don't know. I want you as his, you're the last journalist in the game. Your next task is to find out what's happening with Cameron Grimes and figure it out for him. He had such a strong start on the main roster. He did. Um, what are we talking about? Tag titles. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, I don't, I think I want um, the Street Profits to win because I don't want the last Street Kids Mega Glove match. Not yeah. Really, not really, but it sort of feels like it has to go that way. Uh, Street Profits advancing past AOP leading AOP and Karrion Cross to be furious at this and to do something about it, to draw back in Bobby Lashley. Then you've got Scarlett and B-Fab. Like, Scarlett's going to put one of them, I always forget what they're called, Hourglass, right? Yeah. like It's not like they haven't done the work, but nobody wants to watch the outcome, I don't think. I don't, I don't sense that, anyway. But I guess if, if it goes on WrestleMania... Karrion Cross hasn't got a new render for WrestleMania for now. He's got a new render for us. He's got a new he? render, yeah. Oh, fair so, enough. So is Dwayne, but that's awesome, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only time they'll be mentioned in a similar sense around WrestleMania, isn't it? Um, oh, yeah, I guess if he's got a new render, that's it. That's sealed it. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we're getting Last Street Kids and Mega Glove one last time. I don't know how you make it entertaining when another multi-man match we're just about to talk about will... Like, I guess you have to split them across the nights. Yes. Maybe, maybe, you know, actually, one of the matches added, I'm going to be a bit more optimistic here, because in a lot of these tag matches, we've had winners advancing, but what of the losers? Mm. Maybe four sets of losers go into... Uh, a showcase tag match. Okay. And that gets could, the creeds on the card. Gets the creeds on the card. You can fold in the feud. OC doing double duty in your booking then. Well, OC are working like triple duty, isn't it? Like they've got NXT <laughs> on the go. They'll probably show up at Bloodsport or something the way they've suddenly had their bookings filled. Like, could you not have the Street Profits and AOP's ongoing stuff folded into a showcase with, for example, the creeds and the OC? Okay. You know. Like the showcase, you're just trying to add stuff to it. The showcase, like a recipe, where you like chuck some cinnamon in, I'll, I'll distract. All you right, from right. Let me make this better for you. Then let me make this better for you. The creeds, great. Yeah, I'm on board. AOP, what they have to, Street Profits. Okay, still on board. And Ricochet and his surprise returning partner Braun Strowman. Oh my god, I've done it. Yeah, mission accomplished. So you're going, leave us with, you're going A-Town Down Under. A-Town Down Under, yeah, to go into the match. And um, Dun and & Bay in the other one, the new Catch Republic. Uh, partly because of a personal investment I have to see them in such a big stadium. Uh, a great job at the Chamber. I have quite enjoyed this run. I really have. I like the matches. I like um, how all of Pete Dunne's offence suddenly was quite meaningless and then Tyler Bate says, I'll do it with you. Mm. And then that's how you get like the Birmingham and that's how you oh. get all, all of their double teams and like, it just, it's... If Pete Dunne needs to learn how to break people's fingers, I've got a bloke you can learn it from. <laughs> so... Guys, God, I heard about this. Yeah. I saw this, I heard about this. It's class. I saw that, I heard about that, but that was mainly from you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm, surprising. I've not yet checked uh, any other NXT coverage because I thought, well, I'll just go to the one real journalist in yeah. the game and he's given me all the information I need. Oh, yeah. All good, apparently. Like, not check cage match. Mm. Copy that Moscow. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of weird as well because we're, we're booking interference in both matches. The AOP Street Profits one makes sense, A, in terms of what's been going on with them and B, because the final testament are a bunch of gits. Well, and as well, but A-Town and under arm beating Street Profits in a fair fight. No, no, yeah. but like, it's kind of difficult to say, and the baby faces come down and cost in a fair fight to Legado del Fantasma, but they do kind of owe them one, especially after the return of the OG, Dominic Mysterio, oh my God. last week. I couldn't cool. work out who it was, and they took the mask off, and I was like, there he is. Could this week... Um, Dominic Mysterio be alongside the Legados. Like, they're all, they're as strong as they've been, basically. Santos is buzzing, arm around Dominic. It's all great. Everybody's having a brilliant time. Um, and then Dominic just at one point spots a fan in the front row wearing the mask of his deadbeat dad. Ooh. And he's like, I'm going to go and have a I'm going to slap him about a little bit, whatever. And then he goes slap the fan about, oh, it's his deadbeat dad, Rey Mysterio. Yeah. And that creates... So, yeah, it's not necessarily them deciding to interfere in the match. Creates a massive kickoff. Legados are distracted by all of this and like the New Catch Republic get involved. Something else I want to bring to your attention from Man in Our Row, because let's go back a second to how the Rock's attack on Cody Rhodes was very carefully plotted throughout the night if you knew what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. There was little interactions where like Seth Rollins thought not all was right. Yeah. And there was a, a spot where you saw Drew McIntyre yes. with uh, Paul oh, Heyman. Heyman. yeah. To, obviously then when it plays out later on, it's like, right, well, if they're dealt with them and they're dealt with them, Cody's going to be a sitting duck here. And that's, so obviously the rock has kind of like put the plans in place and everybody has acted exactly as he wanted for him to get to Cody. What also happened on Raw in the backstage of one of those segments, if I'm not mistaken, was Andrade and Dom. Did you see mm -hmm. that? After Andrade's match, he was still in his gear and he was catching up with Dom who'd been smashed in the face with Becky Lynch. What a shot that was, by now, the way. I want to pick up on two things here. Number one, Triple H loves his background interaction. Yes. Andrade could... It's the first thing he thinks of. Yeah, whoever's in front of the camera having a chat, but who's in the background? Yeah, The Rock's great and everything, but is Nikki Cross staring in the background? Because uh, <laughs> we're never paying that off. Like, yeah, it could be Andrade being added to this never-ending keep adding partners matches. Keep adding until we get to Bad Bunny. Basically, yeah. Like, we've been manifesting this since, what, like, Backlash? Pretty much. It is Easter. Burr, 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 and it could still happen. However... I've got another pitch for you. Oh, go on. Right? Andrade interacting with Dom. Mm -hmm. 
you're going SmackDown feed, Rey Mysterio, big tag match. Route one. I like Route one. Mm. Get you there the fastest. Mm-hmm. It's However, necessarily when you're the National League title, but yeah. I got a scenic route for you. Take, right? ta- um, take me away. Dominic was told by Rhea Ripley in the clear up house on Raw. <laughs> yes. Just win. Like they were all told, just win. Kind of sick of us being losers. And then he gets uh and then he gets smashed in the f- oh, We're gonna do a song. Uh Finn Balor, mm-hmm. JD McDonough, mm-hmm. Damien Priest, mm-hmm. uh, and Dominic Mysterio. Mm-hmm. I was being told by Rhea Ripley. And of course collectively. <laughs> they're in the f- in judgment day. Yeah. And he is a day. I miss that. Right. So she was like, just win. Just can we stop being losers? Was yeah. the was the message. And JD then, McDonough and Ricochet was class, by was good, the way. Wasn't it? And then he got smashed in the face. Yeah, yeah, and then Dominic. Yeah, by dropped. Becky Lynch, right? Dominic, who has been taking advice from Andrade. What if at WrestleMania, you're still not picking this up, and I love no, this. I'm not. Uh, what if at WrestleMania, where of course Ray Ripley is facing Becky Lynch, Dominic and Andrade's relationship has opened the door for Charlotte Flair? Oh, God. And it's a Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch seed being planted oh, for a wow. post WrestleMania feud. Like, because I think Andrade actually knows Charlotte Flair. He does, yeah. I've heard. Same on the internet, implying that they're about to have full sex. So, what if that is that? And like Charlotte and Becky had made mates around war games, but she was like, look, you did that to Dominic. And my husband is apparently now his best friend. <laughs> He's kind of got off the rails, actually. And what if that exists there for okay. the the Rhea and Becky match? It might not. I'm not saying that we don't get Andrade mixing in in the SmackDown thing, but what if you're getting a second story? I need to write this down. So right now, what we got? We got. Oh, that yeah. I've, the both Ray. Like, it's like a fifty person tag match at this point. Ray, Cruz del Toro, Whacking Wild. God, get him on that WrestleMania card one way or another. And potentially Carlito with, of course, Selena Vega. By the way, did you hear the story? I think it's from Becky's new book. I'm going to have to buy Becky's new book. It sounds uh, yeah, uh, about the SummerSlam match. It was going to be Bianca uh, versus Selena and Carmella, and they just forgot to book Selena. It's, what time is Selena getting here? Huh? I'm currently listening to the audiobook. Of oh, it, yeah. And it's great. I highly recommend it. Um, hey, if you uh, want an audiobook of this, <laughs> never know. Sure, he'd love it. <laughs> I was going to say, I think I know, but yeah, yeah. You, you keep trying to manifest that. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's strong stuff, as you would expect. But I'm still early into a training. I cannot wait for her to get to WWE. Like, I, every single story is surely going to be a, this was pretty good, but let me tell you how it nearly went wrong six yeah, times. Yeah. First. Um, yeah, recommended. It's on Spotify Premium, if you're a Spotify. Yes, and um, you're signing out on the news. She does, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a five-star review and then screenshot it because she needs the proof. Yes. Um, so we've got, I don't know if it's going to be a mix. So in terms, we've got four four men, one woman on the babyface side. Yeah. Well, potentially with Carlito. Oh, no, I've got Carlito. You've got Carlito, yeah. And then on the heel side, we have Santos, Angel, Umberto, Electra Lopez, of course, and now potentially Dominic Mysterio. That's five and five. But Andrade and Bad Bunny. Mm. But then I don't know if they just have Andrade go babyface, be a babyface. Yeah. And Carlito is the one that's easiest lifted out of this if you yeah. were going to insert, like, even if you were just going to stunt cast, it's not Bad Bunny, but somebody else, you know, yes. like, on the night at WrestleMania. We keep hearing all of these names that are being contacted. It doesn't just have to be, like, the upper-tier Rushmore wrestlers. There's always a case of a surprise, you mm. know, like, their backlash had Savio Vega, mm-hmm. and I'm seeing Los Bariqua, like, three days earlier in Philadelphia wrestling the FBI, who, by the way, have got their own mystery partner. Like, somebody's going to be a member of the FBI for the night. Amazing. I can't wait for that. But yeah, so like, it could be anybody in this match that we keep building. But <laughs> I think the it match... was an inevitable mania match. I think the match we keep building gets booked or uh, Lumberjack. Okay. Ray and Santos in a Lumberjack because all the fighting that's happened on ringside... Like, the SmackDown GM is nothing if not a robust professional. I forget what his name is, but yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. Stay tuned. And he'll say, well, look, you, all your interference is wrecking all my matches... Just be out there. Mm-hmm. Like, what hap- what happens, happens, and one winner, and then it's done. Yeah, so we, we're booking New Catch Republic to qualify. Yeah. Who were great, as I said, at Elimination Chamber. And speaking of Elimination Chamber... Oh, right. I've been reliving Elimination Chamber this morning. Oh, hang on. 
Oh my god! <laughs> through this stunning elimination chamber program from Australia, travelled all the way from Australia Beautiful. with with a message from the Honourable Rita Safiotti MLA, who of course is the Minister for Tourism. Of course. Um, I don't know if she's left or right wing, so I'm not endorsing her. No. But I am endorsing this, WrestleMania on the inside <laughs> front cover. Thank you to James Rice, who sent this over for us. James, and you put a lovely letter with this, and I'm only back in the office today, so I've only had a chance to read it today. So, James, I'm going to send you an email back, because you are smarter than the rest of us and are not on X. Um, Very clever. Yeah, So, but I will, I'm going to be getting in touch with you as a, as a special thank you, because there is so much to love about this. Uh, it's, <laughs> Particularly that it's page. weird, right? Because, like, the thing is... I'm, I'm flicking through. I don't know if the cameras catch this. Like, lots of people, yeah, big, like, sort of big pictures. Like, it's like Zoe Stark, like, full page and stuff. Yeah. There's all of Alpha Academy and the like. But it's odd. He gets, like, the very back page. And then some people, I don't know, just kind of warrant two pages. <laughs> it's kind of warrant a double page spread at the, and I use this term in every sense of the word, bitter end of the program. It's CM Punk, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't see this. Because the man is worth the drive, isn't he? You either get why he's worth it or you don't. Catch up. Thank you, James. It's amazing. It is amazing. I have often held this next to my face and said, it's amazing. Yes. But in this case, I'm specifically talking about the program. Thank and you so much. I would argue the only thing better than that is <laughs> have the game photos of where the kangaroo and the dog had a fight. Oh, my God. <laughs> we enjoy a bit of fantasy booking. Some say we indulge on the SmackDown yeah. preview and review. We enjoy a bit of fantasy booking. <laughs> but uh, no fantasy booking will top the reality booking of that guy and that jacked kangaroo. When he gets caught with a dog trying to drown him, and he's like, I haven't got your dog. I mean, you're drowning. <laughs> you're definitely trying to drown my dog, mate. And the guy just starting the fight as if he was like, it was in a pub fight. You want to go? Like, like, the kangaroo did a full on, like when Finn Balor first turned heel. <laughs> like, he's got like a t- 20 pack. Gets his go. claws hey, out. Bri- hey, Brian's project for the. Don't put eyes on anyone. Pop Finn Balor's head on a kangaroo's body. The camera keeps like, you know, when The Rock was trying to lift the camera up. Yeah. Keeps, because it keeps dropping it because he's trying to smack him. <laughs> Look at Rue now. Like, he keeps trying to like <laughs> get the camera back in place. And then he comes up and suddenly the kangaroo's got teeth out of him. Um, thank you for walking near that river. So we want, sorry, just to clarify, we want our heads on John Cena and Stone Cold Steve Austin. On the truck, please. With, yeah. a, with what, a kangaroo? Which one's the kangaroo in the Rock uh, 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 Cody so the, situation? So the Rock is, uh, well, hang on. We've got to be able to tie this to the Rock and Cody because the kangaroo's got Pharaoh, hasn't he? Okay, yeah. Like, so no, the kangaroo is um, Cody, I guess. Yeah. And... The Rock is <laughs> the man fighting. The man, I'm going to fight him. Look at Rune now. I do like us on the trucks. Brian, enjoy, yeah. enjoy your weekend, mate. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Brian Vedic as always. I loved Grateful Fed, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that was, was fantastic. That. Um, oh, a match I'm so looking forward to tonight. It is... I've, I was going to write this in my notes, and then I thought, uh, the point doesn't look good written down, actually, um, particularly to try and promote it to an international audience. I wrote down, a bell-end warm-up, <laughs> right? Because, because we're in filling out the Liberty Bell? No. It's getting be- us ready for WrestleMania. Because Kevin Owens and Randy Orton are both fighting Logan Paul at WrestleMania, <laughs> but before that, they're having a warm-up match, taking on yes Pretty deadly tonight. I mean, yeah, it's fair. It's Kevin knows he's going to put both of them again, isn't he? Yes. In, I love that spot, by oh. the way. Uh, he ends up in like six-month feuds over that spot, doesn't he? Is he going to have a spot eventually where, do you remember that John Cena WrestleMania entrance was just a, a line of John Cena's all doing that? That's one, I think. Kevin was just running down, punching every <laughs> single one of them. Is, right, it is tonight the night. I loved the segment last week, by the way, where Randy Orton popped up and scared them. I'm sometimes a simple man. Make them the WrestleMania hosts, for God's sake. So this is what I was going to ask, right? Are they going to get... Oh, like, are Orton and Owens going to win? Obviously, yeah. There's got to be dissent... Not dissension, yeah. Can they coexist? They don't need to coexist. They're opponents mm. of WrestleMania. But are Can you, you top this? Yeah. Well, so a pretty deadly going to suffer what Austin Theory meant to and then just did a big jump instead. Yes. Like, is one of them going to actually nail... That cell. They have that. to do it as a, like, this is what's coming for you. Yeah. So I and think then Logan Paul next week can be like, right, but who pins me? And does, and do pretty deadly after that. So, like, this is not fair. 
Like, how has this happened to us? Why were we not considered for X and Y and Z? Smackdown GM, can't remember your name. And he's like, right, fine. I've gotten off the phone to Postman Pierce, and we've agreed that you get to be the host of WrestleMania under the condition that... Uh, you might need to go on the website open. Under the condition that you join this Raw superstar, and then we get wacky skits all night between Pretty Deadly and... Oh, you can play the game. Yeah, hang on a second. Do you want a raw superstar? Yeah. And they've both... Well, these people that just haven't made the card, basically. Yeah. Okay, hang on. I go Monday, Pick right? one. Who would interact well with Pretty Deadly? Everybody. <laughs> right, here we go. It's time to play the game! Time to play, time to play the game! game. Who's going to join Pretty Deadly from Raw? WrestleMania. Nailed it. I think I've actually just got to already without the game, but we'll go the game first. Okay, I'm scrolling. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Pick a number between (laughs) one and eight. Six. Kind of busy. It's Kogan Kingston. (laughs) Done it before as well, so that doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, Twist. Prove the rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doesn't count as a guess. Oh, good. Stop. Uh, again, one to eight. Four. Apollo Cruz. That poor guy. <laughs> yep. There's one. Uh, oh, well, to be fair, right? He could be a great. You know, what, I'm going to stick on this. I'll tell you why. Because if anybody. WrestleMania's been booked impeccably. Mm-hmm. Every match, difficult to predict. Unless you're Apollo Cruz. Oh! Because that man can see it in the future, can't he? And pretty deadly are doing all the hosting duties, and they're like, "Who's going to win this one, Apollo?" And then just he can tell them, he can whisper, and they're like, "Oh, we can't wait to see it play out now." Got another another alternative: picking up between one and six, pick two, two via, and they're like, "Oh, it's coming! Don't worry, he's, he's definitely coming, he's definitely coming." No, I uh, I've got the raw hosts lined up, if not Apollo Crews, having developed something of a winning streak lately, which uh, the partners incredibly confused about. Candice LeRae joins with us and just hates everything and everybody. She shoots on every single match. She's like... Uh, I suppose if you like it, we're going to have The Rock and yeah. Roman Reigns. I was looking at the build bit. for that main event, and uh, yeah, I see them all talking about family members. Glad they're all dead. So, uh, and he's like, well, they're not right with you, Candice. <laughs> and he's still confused. <laughs> so it's off. I've got to put my finger on it. Let me work on this. Give me six more weeks. I, I just think it works. I know for sure if you're in, if you're in Philadelphia... And you've got Pretty Deadly hosting. You can have a bit where it's not Pretty Deadly. It's Pretty Dudley. And Bubba and Devon show up. That's even better than what I was going to say. I was going to say they could have one of them walls where you've got, like, you know, like the WrestleMania logo in the background. Cricket Wireless or whatever the oh, sponsors yeah. are for this year. Boo. Yeah, and they're welcoming... It's burning to my brain. Welcoming wrestlers backstage. And then, like, they're... I want to hang out with the Cricket Wireless guy. It looks fun. <laughs> Let's have a look at him. Has he got a name? Cricket wireless guy. He called cricket, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All in love with cricket wireless. Already done that, thanks. I want to hang out Look at him. him. Look at him. He's got the, the 2007 uni haircut there. <laughs> there he is. Ramon. Oh, they've all got different names. Oh, it's different God. cricket wireless. Oh, my God. <laughs> dusty like... flipping. The, oh, I thought he was flipping the bird there. There's is... a Dusty. Oh, my God. There's a Dusty. Oh, well, all right, Dusty then. Dante. Dante. Oh, Miles looks. Miles is my kind of guy. Miles is Wilborn's cricket. I'm not sure if you can pick this up. Nicholas, but <laughs> Miles is really my kind of guy. <laughs> oh, I, was just oh, I think the cricket wireless guys shoot called cricket, by the way. I was going to say they just go backstage and they all say, say, hey, cheese steak, and take pictures. But that's better. <laughs> right, say, so one better. of these things is not like the other. Uh, Meet our beloved crew of cricket characters, Ramon, Mia, Rose, Chip, Lucy, Dusty, Dante, Miles, and Barry. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to the Barrys. Look at Barry. He's polite, soft-spoken. He sees the good in everyone. Hey, Barry, wait a second. Hey, 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 hey. You all right. Good name for a dog. There's (laughs) There's <laughs> here we go. There's nothing stopping Barry from being a, his friend's metaphorical sides. There's a there's, that's a clue for night two. Metaphorical side sounds like an NXT tag team. <laughs> like Nathan Fraser. Like, oh no, then they're not behind me. They're metaphor. Oh, I love the cricket wireless gang. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can we split them up across either side for the Legada's LWO match? And which side of the cricket are you on? Oh. <laughs> well, the cricket wireless one. gang. Oh, wow. What were we talking about? Uh, Will Cricket Wireless. Um, we don't. We can't confirm. We don't know for definite. But the Cricket Wireless guys might be joining uh, Kazuchika Ricarda, Mercedes Money, uh, CM Punk, and me, a square-headed twat, <laughs> at our live show. Uh, tickets are limited, extremely limited, but still available. Mm. And now the Cricket Wireless guys are coming as well. So get yourself along. We are the meat in your WrestleMania sandwich, but if you want a vegan alternative, you can check out the Underground Arts menu for loads of great food and drink that you can enjoy while we're on stage well, doing this, basically. So get yourself along. There's not many tickets remaining. You'll have plenty of time to get over to WrestleMania and all that good stuff. Bloody love Miles and Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, hello. It's me, Barry. Uh... <laughs> Oh dear, right. One final thing uh, to talk about ahead <laughs> of SmackDown tonight. Uh, LA Knight got arrested last week and he threatened to do worse this week. He attempted a home invasion. Absolutely good, that was. So we got to see Wendy Styles back on TV. House Styles being back on screen again. This was the I want to know what LA Knight's house looks like. I want it to be reversed this week. Yeah. It's, it's Slim Jim House. Do you think he's been put on like house arrest or he's got like one of them ankle tags like Jermaine Pennant had to play football with? But it's made out of Slim Jims. Yes! Slim and he just eats it all. He snaps, snaps How out. How did you get out of that? Snap out of it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I can't believe we're clear. Like, well, that's that sorted. I've written what will LA Knight do to AJ Styles next year, but I, I don't, think we, don't think we can top just that. Freaking AJ Styles. <laughs> just having to crawl through loads of meat sticks to get to LA Knight. Yeah, he should, he should, uh, it should be like uh, a week of him being bombarded with Slim Jims, basically. Because that's what, that's LA Knight's secret weapon. <laughs> I can't get to you now, but I can really bother you. It just has this house, he's like banging on the door, and like, there's just no answer. It's like, oh, loud mouth, never shuts up, like, you're how is he not in? And he's banging on the door again. He rings the doorbell, right? But the doorbell's preset. It's got it's one of them ring ones where you can put anything you want on the ringtone. So he rings it and goes, Yeah. And AJ thinks it's actually the other night. So let me in. And then nothing happens. Yeah. Say let me in. And that's 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, alternative version, right? LA Knight, as a result of trying to invade <laughs> AJ Styles house, has been uh, arrested. But they, I think AJ said he wasn't gonna press charges. Yeah. So instead they say, All right, new rule. Um you can't, you can't do that again, LA Knight. I know you want to cave his head in. And uh, it's just maybe slightly watering down this blood feud, but we've got plenty of them on the WrestleMania card. It's not a blood feud at this point. It's yeah. funny. That um, so he's told you have to stay, I don't know, what's it, 50 feet mm -hmm. away from AJ Styles' house. Right, and AJ Styles doesn't hear a banging this time. Bing bong on the AJ Styles' house, right? <laughs> and he goes, oh, well, he opens the door. No one there. Oh, well, bloody, that's frustrating. I was doing my workout. Goes back, bing bong, opens the door. There's no one there, what's going on? <laughs> bing bong, third time. He realises it's <laughs> LA Knight doing it, but because he's got loads of Slim Jims all stuck together, he can ring the doorbell from 51 feet away. Thoughts? Like the big poker stick from Friends. What did you, I love it. Ding dong, ditch. What, is that what you called it? What no, did, we didn't call it that. We called it uh, knock a door run. Right, it so explains like, the entire game in the title. Knock a door run. Yeah. Same where I was, where I grew knock up. Knock down ginger, excuse you. I find so. that repulsive. Like, knockdown ginger is so weird and posh. It's like you saying nog end for the bread. <laughs> like, it's just a crust on the end. Anybody going to eat that nog end? <laughs> <laughs> Last bit of bread in the old office. They call it heel sometimes. In the they heel. Yeah. Same people that draw baths. <laughs> Let me draw a bath and I'll be right back. Where's your pen and paper? Uh, Mum? Penny? <laughs> <laughs> Mum? Mum, mum, mum's all right, isn't it? Mum, what, what are you saying? Ma'am, no, thank See, you. See, in, in the Midlands as well, there's mum. Yeah, mum, it really annoys me. If, got, if Nick Wayne goes to Birmingham and he takes his mum, <laughs> it's just going to fit boom. right in. Boomy. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Nick. Yeah, knock down ginger, that was the one I was going to. Yeah. Like, not, it's not, is it knocky nine doors everywhere up here? Oh, Door danger. See, I get that, though. Knock, That's... I've heard it could just be called knock and run. Knock, which is and, like knock you, and run. Which is like you've told some of the instructions as you're mid-playing the game. Knock and run. Oh. What? This one? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Is he coming on? Oh, oh get in. I just want to ask you, because we did this on... Um, I think it was 
thing he didn't work yeah, yeah. on wrestle culture. Don't mind me. Just uh, <laughs> messing with your preview. Did you ever play uh, Garden Gnomes? Oh, yeah, he talked about it. Which class. is like the reverse idea of I, I mean, obviously, you know me. I have zero You're sense of adventure. Of There's no yeah. way I did it. Yeah. But I don't even know the game. No, so I'm like, so excited for him to tell you this. Instead of the knocking and running. Yeah. You like so you get like says so like five. Oh, it's three. Oh, it's three. Just walking through the streets of Philadelphia. Yeah. You knock on the door, right? Obviously with the guard. <laughs> the first number's door. You just you just stand there. <laughs> like you can stand there straight, like striking a pause or just stand still. And the winner is the person who's the last one to run away, obviously. Now, <laughs> if you're smart, you've obviously picked the back of the garden. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in a fair fight, the idea is you'd all be lined up next to each other, and it's the last one to flinch who wins, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, but imagine the audacity you've got to have on someone's garden, yeah. on property that they own, to be like, yeah, I'm what? <laughs> Get some water. Yeah, I'm, I'm a water feature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like a fishing rod. Did you play this? Yeah. We I, was, I was rubbish. It. I was rubbish. <laughs> yeah. I was, was people with nerves of steel just like, go on then. Hey. And I was like, oh, I was like already in the yeah, position. Yeah. My pose was running, man, ready to go. <laughs> I was just curious. I didn't know. No, He'd that, never heard of it either. No. The other, like, I just... We were just hardcore. Uh, they, they, were, they had it on um, that, what was the Channel 4 show? Because... Is it Ned who did? Oh, balls of steel. Yeah, yeah, that steel. would have. Had he one did knock and it. don't run, didn't he? And he did. He yeah. knocked on someone's door. And they went, "What do you want?" And he went, "Stop not looking at my door." <laughs> <laughs> then, like, is it? Thanks. I really appreciate learning about that game. Yeah. Hey. Did you mention Ned? Some f***ing diddy donuts. Uh, yes, I remember the, that. He was the best. I want to watch some of that this afternoon. It's probably aged very badly. I yeah. imagine it's aged terribly, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, oh, the that. host is a bad dude now, isn't he? So yeah. Oh yeah, he went nuts, didn't he? Um, I the. I don't know if this is like American television has just told us this happens with like quarter age kids. Mm. Cause I wasn't aware of anybody doing this when I was younger, but like you would watch like sort of a high school thing and like there would be like a garden knows like, let's, let's prank the Andersons mm -hmm. and then cut to them putting some shit in a bag <laughs> and setting fire yeah. and putting it through the letterbox. Yeah. That's really awful. Did that, <laughs> that can't have happened in real life. In America, in America they TP people's houses, don't they? Yeah, some, that doesn't really happen some, here, does some it? Some charming of your roof or something. We have, like, things over here, like, is it before Bonfire Night at Halloween called Mischief Night? I don't get involved because I'm, I'm good. But, like, I was always scared of that when I was younger. I was like, naughty boys. Like, we used to egg people's houses, we used to do. Did you? Yeah. I, I don't like that about you. I don't. You wouldn't have chosen to oh, do that. Oh, it wasn't mine. That was peer was, pressure, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I'd like, that's, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Thing that's is, not big or clever. And I would aim for the windows, but that was only because I thought, well, that's going to be a nightmare to get off the brickwork, so. <laughs> it's quite kind of you. Fine, I just thought some more thoughts, actually. Of Violas are poaches. LA Knight. He's gone from wanting to kill uh, AJ Styles now to being a prankster. So another pitch is, is it's all Slim Jim related, by the way. Right. So he's, he's ding dong, it's just a big, <laughs> big, big long line of Slim Jims all glued together, right? <laughs> Right, and it, it's just like, bloody, I'll bloody get you, you prick. Right, and he, he finishes whatever he's doing, and he goes back to his weight room, and he goes to pick his weights up, and he goes, oh, it feels weird, and then just two giant Slim Jims all rolled up. <laughs> and then, last one, last one, he goes, oh, bloody hell, I'm not going to get you, you prick. Goes up to bed, <laughs> and I love, rolls over, when he starts in there, it's just a body shape, that Slim Jims. He's like, right, enough of this. He runs down the house. He goes to get in the car. Urgh, can't start the car. Can't start it. Urgh, and the, the exhaust is so packed tightly full of Slim Jims that the car's arse is like a cartoon. It just starts expanding. It goes, pff, blows up in his face, right? But it's not so. It's actually Slim Jim because the <laughs> steering wheel was also a Slim Jim. As were the keys. It's like there was multiple reasons why this car won't start. Well, there's your blood feud. That is real meat madness. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts ahead of SmackDown tonight here in the comment section or on X at What Culture WWE. Done it again. Why well, say you can, oh you can follow all three of us, in fact. You can follow Michael Hamflet at Michael Hamflet. You can follow me at Adam Wilmore. Oh. You can follow our brilliant producer at it's Adam Nicholas. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. Make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts, even though they might not be as daily in the coming days uh, or weeks. Uh, in fact, to be honest, because uh, it's back on it and then we're going to wrestle my idea. Uh, but yeah.
Tonight on SmackDown, we've got uh, WrestleMania Tag Team Qualifiers. Street Profits versus Ate and Dan Under. New Catch Republic versus Legado del Fantasma. Bianca Belair versus Dakota Kai. Pretty Deadly, yet boy, versus Owens and Orton. And Jade Cargill is back, Michael Hamflet. The SmackDown preview, the Fed, WrestleMania. It's got all this and so much more. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.